Hey everyone, welcome to another lesson. Now, for the longest time, floats were our go-to way to put two things next to each other on the web. Unfortunately, because this is not what CSS floats were designed to do, we usually created just as many problems as we solved by using them. Luckily for us, modern CSS has much better solutions. In this lesson, we are going to be creating this widget. Now, just like the stack primitive, we need to have a consistent getter in between two different elements. But unlike the stack, we need to put two things next to each other and have them take up fractional parts of a whole. Okay, just like in the last lesson, you can follow along by clicking on the starter project in the link below under the solution heading. Um, but yeah, let's start with some basic markup. So once again, we always want to import React from React. And in this example, we are using a form component. Don't worry about this form component. We will go more into that in the next lesson, but let's import that in. form and through the power of copy and paste let's go ahead and bring that in oops let's not do this Let's freeze this. Okay, let's try that again. Take two. Okay, everybody, just like last time, we are going to start with a starter here. You can call it split.jsx, but if you don't want to, you can just change that and just make sure you just change it on line eight here on the index. And just like everything, we're going to take advantage of the copy and paste functionality just to get things started. Now, once again, we need to import React from React. Um, we also are going to import um, a component from the this form.js file over here. I the only reason I have this is just so we don't focus on the form part. We're really just worrying about splitting this section and this section from each other. We'll go in more into this form it, component in the next lesson, but for now, just know that it's wrapped in a div and that there's a bunch of in input groups inside of it. And that's all you need to worry about for now. So we're going to import that form. And let's refresh the page. And we have an error. Oh, yeah, and it also helps to acknowledge that the form is a default not named import. So we all make mistakes here. So there we go. This is how it looks, personal information. The information you'll provide will be displayed publicly and then our form. Now, knowing that the H2 and the span will both need to be a sibling of the form component, uh, I've just gone ahead and preemptively wrap them in a div. 
Um, and then the outer div is what we're going to use to eventually control that split. Now, let's go ahead and start building our split, prim split primitive. So once again, we bring in styled. And with a little hump of the magic of copy and paste, let's go ahead and bring this in. Now, the other thing we're going to bring in is that spacing map from the split lesson. I've gone ahead and put that in a separate file just to make things easier and keep things clean. So let's go ahead and bring that in. Once again, this is a named export this time, so let's go ahead and do that. from spacing map and there we go this you've already seen so I'm not going to go into it this is exactly what we did with the 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 stack primitive and same thing with display grid but this time we are doing something a little differently we are actually defining some columns here. Now the grid template columns property allows you to define how many column tracks we have and how wide they should be. We define the width of each column track using any valid CSS unit. It could be anything like 30 pixels, 50% and two rams. And the number of columns are defined by how many we, we put in here with a space in between them so let's say we wanted to have three columns of 30 pixels 50 percent and two reps well then we would do 30 pixels 50 percent and two rep and this would create three column tracks of exactly those sizes now you'll notice what I had in here was one FR and one FR. FR is a special unit only available to the grid if you're using display.grid, display grid. It's a unique size unit that is sometimes called the fraction. And it basically says, give me one fraction of the remaining space available. So in this case, we're saying, hey, this first column, I want it to have one fraction and this column to have another fraction. And because they're the same amount, it's basically going to split the columns. It's going to take that remaining space and divide it among the two columns, at which turns out to be a 50-50 split. So we can see that here. If we wrap everything in the split instead of the div that we had. And already we see that this uh, personal information section is now on to the left and our form is on the right. Now, it is important to understand that this is an FR unit is not the same thing as a percentage. We're, when we use percentage, if we were to say like 50%, 50%, we are saying, give me 50% of the size of the parent. But that, do, that doesn't take into account that we have some a gap property on here of like one rem by default. So now, we, we made this column 50% of the parent and this 50% of the parent, and we're flowing over by one rem because we didn't take into account this one gap. That's where the, the FR unit really shines, is it, it knows how, many, how much space is available after all is said and done. And you won't get these overlaps like we had with the 50%. Now, 
in our case, we want to have a one third split. And we can do that by going the first one taking up one fraction. And then we say the second one takes up two fractions. What this says is take the remaining space and divide it into three because we have three fractional units and put one of them here and give the rest to the second column or effectively one third will we go here and this is two thirds and this is good we can hard code this but that's not going to be very useful so we really want to adopt something just like we did with our spacing map property and and give it some type of prop that we can say give me one third and it will automatically do what we need so with the power and magic of copy and paste like i have been doing all along let's change it to look like this first of all let's create a map called fractions and if we pass in one fourth then we will do one fourth at the beginning and three fourths on the end, one third, one half, two thirds, three fourths all using the appropriate ratio. And then just because it's this is I found this to be very helpful, let's create the concept of auto start, which says I'm gonna let the first item take up as the amount of room that it wants to take up. And then whatever's left, we'll give to the second column. And the same thing with auto end. We're going to say whatever the first one column is, we'll give it the remaining space. And the end, we'll let it take up the amount of room that it wants to take up. So, and then right here in our grid template columns, we are doing the same thing that we're doing right here. We're, we're going into a... Uh, string interpolation we're passing in a function called props and in this case just to make it a little easier instead of doing props.getter like we did up here we are going to just pull that prop off using destructuring and we're going to go pass in the fraction and if it exists in this fraction we'll use it otherwise we're going to default to one half which ends up being a 50 50 split so let's go into our split and give it a fraction equal to um, one third. Oops, not 1.3, one third. And now we, we've got the exact layout that we are looking for. Um, but this gutter, I actually want to enforce a bigger gutter. So let's actually go ahead and give it an extra large gutter too. And there we go, we got a little bit bigger gutter in here. And there we go. Uh, the final code for this lesson, if you like, is at the end of the lesson. Uh, we've made this awesome sidebar component um, with a split of one third for the information and then the form takes up the other side. But this form is boring and it's ugly and really not very useful in this kind of state. So what we're going to do in the next lesson is we're going to learn about two complementary primitives to turn this into a much better form. Those primitives are the columns and column primitive. We'll see you on the next lesson.